the initial idea of, of Neil was uh, to make an exhibition about this conjunction, as the title of the exhibition is about this very close relationship between Peter Merkel as an architect and Hans Josephson as a, as a sculptor, which is uh, quite astonishing that uh, an architect is, orient is, is orientated in, in the work of a, of a sculptor, but the, the reason for that is maybe uh, very simple that the subject of, of, of Josephson's work is all the time the human being, the human figure in space. And this is in, pr in principle, you can say, also the, the key question of for, for any ar architecture. And uh, through this point is, is also the, this work of Hans Josephson is very important and a very imp has a very important impact for, for uh, Peter Merkley's developing of his own languages and of, of architecture in some sense. And maybe you're astonished when I'm, I'm, when I'm saying the, it's the human being uh, the, which is in space, but what is the subject, but in fact uh, even these three pieces, maybe not that the first view, you, uh, they, uh, you can recognize that they are about human beings, but they are the, the end of his, of his career. He was de developing his uh, language starting in a, in a very reduced grammatical way. And then you will, will see in the, in the outdoor space a very figurative past, very figurative half figure. That means a, a head or a torso. And those are the, the latest ones uh, and they are still uh, busts, you see all the time a nose, you see a mouse, you see the hair also, you see the chin and here what is here is all the time something uh, like a very reduced uh, torso uh, and it's I think it's important to know that also for these pieces Josephson was all the time working with, with real uh, uh, women as a uh, inspiration, as, as, as mod uh, he was working with models in, 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 and these models was not uh, commercial models. Uh, that it, it, he had all the time a close relationship to them, either his his wife or, or the the wife of his son, or or sometimes also my wife. He was working with with, with people. He had a close relationship, and finally you can recognize. I don't see her already, but uh, Verena, her his widow. Uh, was planning to be here also, and you will maybe you will recognize her <laughs> after <laughs> after you have you have seen this, these pieces uh, which are in principle uh, the human figure in in the space, and that's also the, the reason for the for the combination in the architectonical uh, defined space. Um, and you talk May about the way of working. Yes, maybe some, some words about when you... Josephson didn't like when, when people was talking about the surface because he said it's very important that you go back and see the whole thing and not be uh, concentrated on the surface. But it is very interesting nevertheless to go very close and to see the, the whole process of how, how he was adding material, taking away material, adding again cutting away and through this uh, very slowly process he was finally uh, arriving this, uh, the, these forms which he once a day said now it has, has to be casted. The material he was working with was all the time plaster and you feel the, the sometimes you feel the fluid plaster how he was adding the plaster with sometimes with his bare hands or with, with a spatula and then you sometimes you see also uh, small pieces of, uh, of plaster, he, he was gluing with fluid plaster on it, then cutting away. Here you, you see a lot of, of uh, signs of, of, of an X, when, when it was too much volume, he was cutting away again. And then finally it was an important uh, question for him when the piece is really finished, because with this surface which, which is very open and not really clear defined it's quite uh, difficult to say now it's it's uh, uh, it's, it's finished and then 
they came in the in the foundry. And what is maybe also important is that the colors of this uh, we, we call it a non-patina, uh, uh, natural patina, uh, which which is uh, coming out of the of the casting process. So that is not patina uh, patination afterwards. It's it's like it is when 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 you pack it out of the form. Yeah. But uh, sculptures that actually probably took three or four years in some cases to mm -hmm. generate, he set them aside, came back to them. So. Maybe also a short, a short word about the reliefs. If, if go on, if go on, go on. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, because here you see it once again, so, so, uh, uh, very clear the, the the point of of human being in in of a human figure in space in the relief. Josephson all, all the time said he has more artistic freedom in the reliefs because in the relief you can uh, make a combination of different uh, figures of sometimes of uh, of figures of human beings and but also of sculptures uh, itself that means it's often also a, a reflection of his own situation as a as an artist as a as a sculptor in 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 the studio confronted with the with the situation that here you have a model and here you have a, a, a piece and what are you doing you, uh, you can you can go uh, forward directly to, to, to the woman uh, or you can work on a on a plaster piece uh, often these these things you see in a way that here you have a, uh, a plate and together with this volume you have an uh, artistic space uh, and in this space uh, he was able to make these constellations and combinations uh, and trying a, a lot of, you see it's a similar combination but it's not the same constellation and I guess we will see a lot of uh, similarity also in the in the w w way how how Peter was working on on his subjects. Um, so the the uh, I should perhaps explain how I uh, came at this. Uh, I, I've. Um, my particular interest, or a particular interest of mine, and I approach through the sort of lens of architecture, is uh, uh, hearing frequently architects talking about the closeness of their relationship with uh, artists in other creative disciplines. And it's something that um, I hear often about work in the 1950s and 1960s and 70s um, and not something in the contemporary discussion at all. Uh, partly that this, these collaborations tend to be quite transient. I mean, they, it, they're exhibition designs which no longer exist and so on. But uh, what I'm anxious to try and do is seize on any situation where you can pin down and really examine a close collaboration. That's the general frame. The specific one is a building in the Ticino, which some of you will know was completed in uh, the early 1990s, where Peter Muckley, as still then a relatively young architect, completed a a uh, building that is in effect a museum dedicated just to the work of Hans Josephson. Um, uh, and uh, it, it represents the kind of uh, culmination of a very intense uh, work, not, not direct working relationship, but a very intense observation by each of them of the other's practice. Um, Markley is, um, uh, was a good deal younger than Josephson and began as a student at ETH. Um, uh, the friendship began with uh, Peter uh, actually working in effect as a studio assistant uh, to uh, Josephson and kind of in flight from the very technical education that he was being offered by, the, by ETH, the, the university in, in Zurich. 
Um, what we've tried to do is uh, explore similarities in working method without being um, uh, absent, without being either didactic or literal. And one of the wonderful things about working here was that uh, with Debbie, who introduced us, we were able to put uh, all the illustrative, call it that, material into the education room at Hazenworth. So, and in a sense, offer very few clues to what we were trying to say here, hoping that the material would uh, tell its own story. Uh, we deliberately put sketches by uh, Hans Josephson and the sketchbooks that we discovered in the process by Peter into vitrines, really to establish a difference in, for the viewer between material that was developed by the artists for, their, uh, for themselves and never something that was to be seen by the public. Um, and uh, th this material, which uh, uh, the, the reliefs by Josephson and the drawings by Peter, which actually have a, a, a very public life. They're uh, often exhibited, very, very much published, and are regarded by Peter Markley as having some status as works of art uh, of, on, on their own. The problem uh, for the um, I'm treading carefully here because there's at least one person who's written a book about Peter Markley in the room. Uh, but the, the, the abiding issue is what is the meaning, what are the meanings of these drawings, given that they have very, very little relationship to the finished buildings. Um, almost not a traceable relationship at all. Um, and the very uh, simple story in these two rooms is about... Um, uh, Peter Markley, with, in relation to the drawings, is about Peter Markley taking a very, very um, uh, almost uh, childish conception of the, an architect's job, a simple square facade with two windows, a door, maybe a roof, uh, and developing that uh, in truly countless um, iterations. Uh, some of the time, uh, uh, actually finding ways to incorporate Josephson's sculpture into the, into the facade. Sometimes the drawings are actually, the house almost ceases to be a house and becomes simply an armature for um, the sculpture. The remarkable thing that struck us is that, uh, and you'll see this only at the end of the exhibition, it's sort of withheld until then, the entrance facade of the Conjunta is uh, reduces all of this to a pure diagram. It's, it's an absolutely abstract facade and the, uh, and the representational element and the sculpture is all, as it were, taken inside the, the building. And uh, I think the other thing to keep in mind when you're looking is that, oh, there is Verena. <laughs> Um, um, uh, is that the building also represented a way stage in Markley's career. Uh, and I see these drawings which are, they're about scale but they have no definite scale, they're about weight but they're very ephemeral objects on. I see these drawings as Peter's exploration of how to move from this preoccupation with human scale and human form, which he'd learned from Markley, to a much, much larger scale, to these big um, uh, commercial buildings that um, uh, he's moved in. I mean, first of all, there was a school and then um, there'd been a series of quite ambitious office buildings where some of this language is much, much harder to translate or apply. Um, and, and this group of drawings here are, are actually slightly, slightly later than most things in the exhibition. And 
um, deal very directly with those problems. And Peter's account is actually, if you ask the office builder client what they want, it, it's a glass box. And the architect's job is either reduced or anyway focused on how you make the structural junctions uh, on the facade. And it's kind of as simple as that. But I do encourage you all to go to the exhibition room, the, the education room, either, well, on your way out, if, it, if Debbie, it's still open, I don't know if it is. Is it? Yes? It can be. Can be. Thank you. OK. I think that's as much as I should say, probably. <laughs> I don't know if anybody has any questions, or for, for Uli or for me. Oh, let's look at the drawing. <laughs> Thank you.